Zenia came about for a number of different reasons. It came about firstly because of a lot of campaigns around the first half of 2016 about access to ESOL provision, so provision for um, English for speakers of other languages. I think it was April 2016, Refugee Action launched a campaign called Let Refugees Learn, which was a campaign specifically tackling the cuts to ESOL provision, which have been massive. We're not a campaigning organisation, so I can't give you the numbers, that's not what I don't have a memory for numbers and it's not what we do. But there has been a lot more discussion about the importance of language to integration, but no support for that in terms of funding. So, I mean, what we're doing is really minuscule in the sea of ESOL provision, but formal provision is really being slashed and there are huge, huge numbers of people on waiting lists. And this is also where it does really unequally affect women because... The limitations to the number of ESOL classes that are on offer mean that they might be a lot further from people's homes. They might not be at times that are suitable to people who have childcare issues. They very rarely do provide childcare. We're kind of a tiny, tiny solution in a very local area to help support women who aren't in ESOL or who are finding ESOL classes not enough. But really, the bigger problem is that there isn't enough support for people in this country who need to learn English on you know the, both the formal and the informal level. We set up a, a workshop that was part of Anti-University, which is a radical informal education festival that happens now each year. The idea was to break the model of traditional befriending or, um, or classes by having English-speaking women take part alongside English-learning women and navigate workshops together, so learning together but about different things. So the English-speaking women would be there, yes, to support the English-learning women, but also they would be learning themselves the workshop content as well as what they would be learning from the women they were participating with would make the experience also really valuable for them. So we did one workshop and we were completely overwhelmed with the turnout. We sort of expected it just to be a one-off and then go away and and maybe think about how else we could do things. And in fact, it it worked really, really well. And we had a lot of support from the Hackney Museum um, where we're still hosted and great supporters in terms of partnerships um, and also provide a venue for us. So yeah, basically the workshops are always sort of built around themes that everybody would be interested in or everybody can sort of have an experience. So we always start like with very very simple a very simple question like like what did you have for breakfast and then people can talk about what the each one has for breakfast or like gradually we go into more depth so people got to share their recipes and like exchange recipes and talk about ingredients that we may use in different cultures that we all use and how we do it so that's an example of something that it's not a matter of like teaching uh, English or something it's about we come together and we share our experiences it just happens that are common sort of Uh, language is English. What we've tried to do is also uh, encourage people to sort of use their own languages and maybe teach each other a little bit of their own languages. So we've talked about idioms that are obviously different in every culture and so that was a good opportunity for people to kind of bring in their own experience and teach uh, someone else. So we have two groups basically, the people who are confident in English, who we call speakers, and the people who are learning English and they come to private secrets that we call them learners. But this is something that a lot of the time you see kind of the boundaries mixing up a bit because you get occasions where someone becomes the learner, someone else becomes like the teacher or, or the speaker. We always try to engage with themes that are relevant to everyone and people can bring in their own sort of personal experiences especially in the cases where people are coming back but even when it's one off we've we've seen this ex- incredible like sharing of experiences even of personal problems even like serious health issues but also just you know the troubles they have with their kids or whatever so even though we have a theme around which we may be working there's a lot of space for women to like kind of share different things and like different experiences from their everyday life and it's a bit there have been cases of people like exchanging numbers and keeping in touch and like maybe 
meeting outside the session to go for coffee. I don't think a lot of the women I've met through Xenia, who are like amazing, amazing people, I don't think I would have the chance to meet in any other context. And I think it's the same for a lot of speakers and also a lot of learners. We, we provide the space for different people to come in and just interact and just like realize that we have so many things in common and even our differences are like so exciting to just see uh, the different ideas of people. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. It is quite often the only opportunity that a lot of these women have to really have adult conversations and mm. particularly a lot of the women who bring their children and that, the fact that we provide childcare is quite a crucial aspect of it because a lot of ESOL classes don't but for a lot of them they just love the fact that they don't have to think about what they're going to speak about for the next three hours or what's going to happen with their children or what they need to cook for dinner or what's going on at home they are given on a plate a conversation topic and they're provided with friendly open-hearted women from different places and they have an adult conversation and that can be a really rare thing when a lot of these women are really socially isolated on a number of different levels it might be partly because they are a mother of young children and no matter where you're from that can be an isolating experience the fact that a lot of them maybe don't speak very good English or aren't confident speaking English with other people so they don't have friends outside of their own cultures which can also be isolating even if they do have a strong family structure and a lot of them come from really difficult backgrounds a lot of them are refugees and asylum seekers some have even been trafficked some some are victims of gender-based violence and domestic violence and actually having a space to be able to you know not go to a service where they have to talk about that trauma but to just talk and build friendships that maybe they don't have the lives that can support those friendships between sessions but to know that you're going to come back every two weeks and see some of the same people and have some of that stress taken away that's as much why we do it really as practicing English. There is a huge amount of value in the spaces that do focus on experience of going through the asylum process for example, Women for Refugee Women do amazing work um, campaigning, not just themselves com- campaigning, but empowering refugee women to campaign about their experiences of being detained or the asylum process and of being in really, really difficult situations in this country. And that has a really, really important place, but it's not what we're doing. It's difficult to get away from traumatic experiences and from past and from pain when the focus is on services, when the focus is on conversations, friendship, it opens something else up and those difficulties come out. Of course they do, they come out naturally. And and so safeguarding is really important in what we do and being able to refer women on to other services, but it's not what we are tackling here. So it does give women an opportunity to relax and think about other things being able to provide women with a safe space where they can share without I don't know being afraid of anything really because it is sometimes especially in some cultures it can be quite difficult for women to express themselves openly in front of men you have a refugee family that come to the country and like both uh, adults have to do attend English classes but then only one of them can practically do it because the other one needs to stay home with the children. It all, it usually happens that it's the woman that does that that does that. So they have to miss out on quite a long time of practicing or learning English. There's so many reasons, really, yeah. and we're still discovering reasons why it is important for us to be a women-only space. Childcare is a really big aspect of that, and we we do also need childcare volunteers. That's a big part of what we do, and we we really try to keep the children slightly separate in the museum so that women can interact completely independently. But there's also cultural barriers. You know, when we were first thinking about this also as an integration and and befriending project we talked to quite a few ESOL teachers who really know their learners very well who said that actually yeah if a woman is is invited to something where they are told you know you'll have an opportunity to make friends and practice English if there are going to be men there they might not feel comfortable coming along and their families might not be happy with them coming along so it is just breaking that barrier completely and 
that's kind of an access reason. But when it comes to being in the room, I think anyone who attends would see why it's important that it's women only. Everyone is able to share in a way that, that I, I do feel wouldn't happen with a male presence. Just for example, breastfeeding is done really openly within yeah. workshops and is never ever questioned, it's never even discussed. We never say, feel free to breastfeed your child. It's just clear that that is okay. We quite often have discussions coming up around the home, the family, food, all sorts of things which aren't gendered issues just in in the word, but because it is a women-only group, women do feel comfortable to talk about their position in the home and in the family and, and how they deal with that and how they would like to deal with that. We did also take a group of women to the Women's March on London, which was a fantastic experience A lot of the English learners that came with us had never ever been to a march in any country. And for them, I mean, it was a small group because understandably marching or protesting is not a safe thing for everybody. And we made that really clear ahead of time. But the women that did come felt incredibly empowered by it and were really excited that they got to take part in that. And we made a banner together and and they wrote on it what they wanted to have on it. So by they, I mean all of the participants together. So... It is a space for empowering women, speakers and learners, to, to have conversations, to share their experiences and to to learn a little bit about how they can be a woman in different in different ways and how they can find support in different ways. We do though, like we do engage in uh, in conversation about maybe difficult issues as well. So we, we have talked about migration and experience of, of migration and we have talked about women's rights and like so it's not like we're hiding away from from issues that might bring up bring about like different opinions and strong opinions but yeah it's not opposition to campaign over one opinion or the other it's like it's just but we do feel that it's important for people to discuss about those things as well because they they do have a practical impact on their everyday lives even if they're like bigger issues the only reason we went on the women's march is because it was such a broad open march and it felt we we did discuss it with the participants and they felt comfortable going but it is really important for us to not be campaigning on controversial topics because or con- campaigning on anything really because we don't want anyone to not feel welcome coming along and no matter what people's opinions are the environment that we and the tone that we are able to set within the room means that, of course, there have been people who have plenty of different opinions, but things are met with a lot of respect and understanding. We are never going to step in and say, you know, actually, because you think that women belong in the home, you don't, you don't belong here. Yeah. You know, every woman is and completely entitled to her opinion here, and it's about us understanding. And, and from our point of view and for a lot of the speakers, it's fascinating to understand different women's views about where they sit in society and, and in their family and where they want to be. And the only way that we're ever going to be able to have that conversation is with an open mind rather than by saying, this is our party line. And if you don't agree with it, you're not welcome. Yeah. I, I had certain ideas in my head about like women being oppressed in several, certain cultures and stuff, which I do still hold to an extent, but having interacted with people from different cultures, I've seen their point of view and I've, I've had the chance to understand how they experience it and how it's not my place as an outsider to kind of like judge what you're experiencing and if you're happy in your life or if I, you need me to like liberate you from whatever oppression I may think you're, you're under. We've been going for just under a year now and we are, we're ramping up what we're delivering a lot. We've gone from monthly workshops, we're now delivering, well, we'll soon be delivering weekly workshops. We, we are still completely volunteer run with no funding. I mean, the reason that we've increased it isn't because we've suddenly been able to increase it. It's just been so clear to us that there's that need and because we care about it so much, we haven't been able to respond to that need with saying, no, we're going to keep it out monthly because we like having our weekends. We do need more support on our organising team. We're a team of five. Um, most of us work full-time or almost full-time. So anyone with experience of, or just passionate interest in what we're doing, particularly when it comes to kind of funding, governance and communications, that would be really, really helpful. But 
before any of that, just come along to a session. That's that's really the best way to find out what we're doing. I mean, we, we are getting a lot of interest from artists or from other community groups wanting to work with us. And at the moment, because we don't have a lot of capacity, I've ended up saying, you know, before before we start talking about this, let, let's just have you to a session. And actually, the best partnerships that we've had have grown out of somebody coming along to a workshop because we can talk for hours about what we're doing but if you actually come along and see what we're doing it it explains it perfectly 